I, Mayor Matt Girding, call the June 17th, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Pepin. Uh, he's excused. Vincent? Here. Gibson? Here. Parody Cotton Zero? Here. Tisho? Here. Witham? Here. Goodwin? Here. Cameron? Here. Austin? Here. All right, Councillor Parody Cotton Zero will lead the Council in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd also like to ask that we all please stand or remain standing uh, for a moment of silence for former city councilor, school board member, teacher, and Summersworth Citizen of the Year, Sherry Dinger, who passed away last Friday. Thank you, you may all be seated. We are all so, uh, so sorry to hear of her passing and um, certainly wish her family our deepest condolences. So I'm so sorry. Uh, next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have st uh, stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Item four on tonight's agenda are any scheduled public hearings. Uh, we actually have three tonight. The first public hearing is on Ordinance 16-24, which is transfer between departments, which if approved would transfer $1,253 from contingency to capital leases. I will open the public hearing on Ordinance 16-24. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 16-24? All right, anyone wishing to speak? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 16-24. Uh, Next public hearing is Ordinance 17-24, which is to amend Chapter 4, Personnel Rules and Regulations, Appendix 1, Assignment of class to grade, which, if approved, would add the assistant library director with a grade of 18, rename the title of library adult assistant to the library services assistant, and add the deputy fire chief with a grade of 29. Open the public hearing on Ordinance 17-24. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 17-24? Alright, again, seeing nobody. All right, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 17-24. And our final public hearing tonight is on Ordinance 18-24 to amend Chapter 4, Personnel Rules and Regulations, Appendix 2, Compensation Schedule, which, if approved, would adjust the compensation schedule to include the fiscal year 2024-2025 compensation schedule to reflect an increase of 6%. I'll open the public hearing on Ordinance 18-24. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 18-24? Anyone who wishes to speak? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 18-24. Next up, we have Item 5, which is comments by visitors. City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors to encourage you to voice your opinions and views at Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five, uh, five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into debate with any person, the Mayor, City Council members, City Manager, or Department Heads. And seeing that we have um, some potential appointments to the School Board, I will, without objection, uh, kind of eliminate the electioneering rule just for tonight, if anyone who is looking to fill that role would like to speak about their potential appointment. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? If you could say your name and the ward in which you live, please. Hi, I'm Bridget Jamison. Um, I live in Ward 3. I've lived there for 10 years. Um, I'm a registered voter. Thank you for suspending that rule. My notes say pause to find out if I'm allowed to do this. Um, <laughs> so just very briefly, I wanted to let you know um, I am interested in filling that Ward 3 school board seat. Um, 
I am a school psychologist. I'm also a former summer's work teacher from about 2014 to 2019. Um, and at that point, I pursued my um, school psychology degree. Um, I'm very interested in doing this. I think what I bring to the table um, is that I'm, I'm very well read on public um, education law and policy. Um, I, a large part of my job is actually building consensus around people who disagree because I, I do a lot with special education um, and working with parents and, and school teams. And so when people disagree, it's, it's usually really kind of on me to work to build um, consensus and, and come to agreement. So I think I'd be a great person for school board. Um, I'm good at navigating different opinions. Um, the Susan Tierney who stepped down was an educator. I'm also an educator. Um, and really my goal is just to help the district make and continue to make um, good decisions for kids and families. Um, even just like in my small neighborhood area, I've seen a lot of families with little kids move in like in the past year, which is awesome, but I think it means we're going to continue to grow. Um, and I'd like to be a voice that um, can help people come to decisions and also um, make, you know, legally sound decisions and continue to do that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to agenda item six, uh, which is the approval of the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the non-public city council meeting held on June 3rd, 2024, as well as the minutes of the city council meeting held on June 3rd, 2024. Do I have a motion? Yes. Councilor Austin. I'll move to accept the consent calendar presented. Councilor Austin moves uh, the consent calendar be approved as presented, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Question for the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. If you are in favor of the motion, you'll state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. Item seven on the agenda is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments tonight by councilors? Yes, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, for the moment of silence for uh, longtime city councilor, school board member, community member, Sherry Dinger. Um, a funny quick story about Sherry. Um, when I ran for the at-large spot, uh, in essence was taking the seat that she was vacating, she wasn't running again. Uh, so after I was elected, but before I actually uh, took the oath of office, there was a knock at my door one day, maybe it was a doorbell, I don't remember, and it was Sherry Dinger. And she said, can you help me? And I'm like, with what? She said, I have all your council materials. And I'm, I thought it was sort of odd. But there was a delivery. She had numerous, those large banker's boxes. I think she had every budget report note uh, that, that she ever got as a city councilor. And I think even school board member took up a portion of a room in the house. And it took me forever to go through it. And I thought, what am I getting into as a city councilor? And my wife said, you will not keep all of that stuff. So I'm pretty minimalistic in terms of what I keep at the house right now. But it's just kind of a funny story. She felt so important to share all of that. And uh, uh, I know her family well, uh, an extended family. She was a great lady. They had a wonderful home up on the hill. Uh, and I do offer my condolences to her husband, Keith, and uh, daughter, uh, Corey, and their extended family. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments by counselors this evening? Councilor Cameron. I will say too that I've known the Dinger family for quite some time myself. Um, even when I was starting to get into different things, Sherry went to my church as well and she would always guide me at church and I was the one that always sat in the back pew and I could always tell when she was there because she would come up behind me and put her hands on me and give me a big hug. So I always remember that about her and when I was starting to get into city council and things, just call me when you have any question. Just come on over, talk to me. And I did take her up on that a few times. Um, they're a wonderful family. Sherry was a wonderful friend. And I will be speaking at her funeral on Wednesday for her. Thank you. Thank you. Other council members tonight? All right. Uh, that will bring us to communications, which we have none. Uh, then item nine is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise. We have none. Uh, item 10 is the mayor's report. I actually only have two brief informational items tonight. 
Uh, the first item is that I want to share information for the filing period uh, for the special city elections, uh, which will be held during the state primary on September 10th. Um, so again, filing period for anyone running for state office has already closed, but if you're interested in filling any of the open city seats, which include Ward 5 School Board, uh, Ward 3 School Board, and at-large city council, uh, the filing period opens July 17th and closes August 1st. Um, my second informational item uh, is regarding the extreme heat we're going to be getting this week. Uh, it's looking like we're going to have a heat wave starting tomorrow that will go, I think, through till Thursday um, with temperatures in the high 90s and the kind of real feel index in the hundreds and hundred and tens. So uh, again, please keep yourself safe, drink plenty of water, uh, stay out of the heat and the sun uh, for any extended period of time and certainly avoid any uh, unnecessary strenuous activity. Uh, also check on the elderly, children and pets. Uh, make sure everyone is staying cool. And uh, if you or anyone you know needs to stay school, uh, cool during the heat, the city will be offering uh, two cooling centers, both here at City Hall as well as at the library. Uh, so feel free to utilize those if you need to kind of take a break from the heat. Um, and that's it. That concludes my marriage report. Nice, short, and sweet tonight. Yes, Councillor Austin. A question on the cooling centers. Wednesday is Juneteenth and the buildings are closed. Somebody be here for those? Oh, that is a great clarifying question. City Manager, I'm gonna refer to you. No, we'll be closed uh, that day with, without staff available. All right, City Manager, I'm gonna ask that maybe we could find an alternative for that day. If, if that's okay, we can talk after. But yes, I certainly think we need something for Wednesday. That good catch, I would not have even thought of that. Um, thank you. Um, next on the agenda is item 11, which is reports of standing committees, uh, finance committee. Uh, we have chairman with them. No report tonight. Thank you. Next is government operations committee. Councilor Mishu. No report this evening. Thank you. Next is economic development committee. Councilor Goodwin. No report. All right. Next is public safety committee. Councilor Pevin's out. So I believe our vice chair is Councilor Vincent. I have no report. All right. Thank you. Public Works and the Environment Committee, Councilor Witham. Keep the trend going, no yeah, report. look at this. And lastly, Recreation Committee, Councilor Cameron. I'm gonna break it, because oh. I have a report. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, our group met on the 12th at 4.30, and Councilor Paradise Contrazero was excused, and Councilor Robert Gibson were excused, and Marty Pepper was the temporary may mayoral appointment. So we approved the past minute meetings of March 20th. And then we talked about Chapter 30, Conduct in Public Parks, listing the names of city-owned recreational properties and parks. And it was brought to the attention of the city manager and suggested to Director Mears that we should consider removing USS Summersworth Pocket Park from the list of parks since it now is privately owned. And in addition to that, suggested the city consider naming Ash Street Park to Ash Street Butterfly Park and adding Veterans Memorial at Stein Park, leaving Stein Park on the list. Um, we did have a motion to sponsor the ordinance to amend Chapter 30, so that should be coming um, before us very soon. Um, Butterfly Park and Ash Street updates. Um, there was an email from Supervisor Davenport, because she couldn't be with us, regarding the designs of potential timeline to secure the Butterfly Park signage. And Public Works Director Babinski added that on June 5th, the city and Home Depot employees did some plantings. So if you haven't been by there, go by. It looks great. Um, and there'll be um, plants coming sometime in the near future here. And there was no Discussion of an irrigation system, but something maybe in the future we might want to look at for down there because right now they're uh, being uh, watered by hand. Um, and we're also trying to let the public know that this is not a dog park and hopeful that once all the plantings are finished and the park is complete, the public will understand that this is not a dog park and adhere to that. Um, Home Depot is also looking at sponsoring the park as an adoptive spot location, which would be great because they've already participated in it. So they were going to uh, talk to their corporate office and see if that's something that they could do. 
Recreation and program updates. Um, the Granite State Track and Field finished this past weekend up in Winnesquam. And if I read correctly, there were quite a few children that placed, so that's great for Summersworth. The Tai Chai for Adults program kicked off June 7th and will meet Friday mornings from 10.30 to 11.15 until June 28th. And the program was full with 25 participants. Kids camp will begin on June 24th and run through August 16th with having July 4th off. There are 48 campers, en campers enrolled, two co-directors, two lead counselors, and four counselors, and one part-time counselor. The City of Summersworth has coordinated with Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to fund the lunch program for the eight-week program. The campers will be visiting 12 state parks, and Fridays will be spent at the Summersworth Library. There are special trips scheduled to visit Hilltop Fun Center, Gathering Place Studio, the Summersworth Fire Station, and the Dover Children's Museum. And some special events will be Wildlife Encounters, Kona Ice Truck, and an ice cream truck. Director Mears also stated that Pee Wee Soccer, Hilltoppers 50 plus walking hiking program and the tiny topper play program will begin this fall. Under miscellaneous, there was the USA Softball League that was using the ball fields at Millennium Park and Mallee Field this past weekend. And it was also raised by Councilor Pepin inquiring about the Riverwalk erosion concern. And Director Babinski stated that they have an immediate plan to install some erosion socks and to replace gravel and they are also working on a long-term plan to correct the issue. He believes some engineering may be required, but city staff is looking into that. And Councilor Michel mentioned the possibility of working with Chinberg Properties on this. We adjourned at 4.50, and that is my report. Thank you so much. All right, that concludes our uh, standing committee's reports. Next on the agenda is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees this evening? Yes, Councillor Mishu. Okay, thank you, Arno. Um, I'm reporting on the Traffic Safety Committee that was held on June 12th at 2 p.m. here in Council Chambers. I was appointed temporary uh, appointment over here, taking uh, Councillor Vincent's spot. First on the agenda was to approve the minutes of February 21st. And the second on the agenda was traffic obstruction of intersection High Street and West High Street. Hamilton and Washington Street. After a long conversation, uh, we agreed that um, Public Works is going to put a sign on the northern lane as you enter into that intersection, um, which would be read, do not block intersection. Hopefully that would help. In some other areas it did help, but we're going to try this first before we move on to something else. Third on the agenda is a one way on Ford Street, signage visibility. Two members of Ford Street came down and uh, spoke to us. Uh, apparently on the corner of Union and Ford Street, there's supposed to be two signs, uh, do not enter. One sign is missing. Uh, Director Babinski said that he will replace that sign. Also, the members of the community down there in Ford Street mentioned that the one-way sign is blocked by his foliage. Mr. Babinski said that he will contact the property owner about trimming so we'll be able to see the one-way sign. Fourth is uh, pedestrian safety in the downtown area, which we all know that was going to happen with the new crosswalk and pedestrian signal cross at the site of High Street and Constitutional, Constitutional Way. So that was all set. Number five is Woolen Drive, no parking on one side. Uh, committee that discussed the pros and cons and no parking effect on the Stone, stone facility. And Mr. Binsky motioned to recommend that one side be allowed for uh, parking and the opposite side, no parking, which be the opposite side of the sports dome will be allowed parking and the opposite side of the sports dome, no parking. But uh, myself, I agreed to uh, sponsor the ordinance to full council. The only thing I have to say on that, if people are out and about, please go down Will and Drive and check because I went down there several times recently and I cannot see how we could put two lanes of traffic each way and then another section for parking. So it seems to be very tight. So between now and before this comes before us, I just ask council to check it out, see what you think. And next was a complaint from um, the intersection of Main Street and Indigo Hill. 
stop sign and crosswalk safety, and people have a problem in stopping there at times. So uh, Captain Duvall stated that he will continue policing efforts in that area to make sure, to see if make sure people stop. And also we mentioned that one of the, several of the stop signs have faded and they're gonna be replaced. And that's it for that one. And number seven, the uh, middle street and high street signage visibility. The signage is faded and needs to be placed. Mr. Bavinci will said he will check into that and about changing that signage. Number eight, miscellaneous. Uh, Manager Belmore stated that Council Vincent asked him to bring up the issue of uh, lowering the speed limits from 35 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour on Otis Roads. Mr. Robida stated that he doesn't recall any accidents on road, Otis Road. Captain Duvall stated changing the speed limit will not affect the people speeding other case of police enforcement needed to take place, so he's going to try to enforce that. Mr. Wilmo also added about adding uh, speed limit signage. Mr. Binsky also said he'll take about adding another or two signs on that road too. Um, we adjourned at 2.37 p.m. Thank you. Other reports of special Your Honor, if I could make yes. a request. I know that out of traffic safety is going to be that ordinance change for no parking on Willand Drive. If staff or someone from the committee could just provide background information on the need for that. I've driven down that road maybe hundreds of times. I've never seen a car parked on the side of the road, so I'm not sure what the reason is for the request. Yeah, without objection. Very reasonable request. Yeah, city manager. The way I recall it, although I didn't have any conversation with the Sportstone people, but I guess there's a concern that if the parking lot's full on certain days, people start parking on the street. Um, so we at least the concern was to at least prohibit it on one side. Uh, we discussed at length, uh, I was concerned, you know, during, during winter there's going to be snow banks too. So I'm not sure uh, what the answer is. Uh, I almost suggested we probably need, might need to uh, post no parking on both sides. Um, I know at the planning board level we had some discussion, and Director Mayers was there at the uh, meeting, and we had talked to the developers about the larger events, I mean, is it, is it 100 or 300 spots in that uh, parking for, in the uh, sports dome? In any event, there's enough, we thought there's enough parking because when they have sporting events, people will come and go as teams finish play. So that they may be enough, but they're going to have at least, uh, I forget the exact number, five, say for the sake of discussion, five special events like a home show or, uh, or a boat show or things of that nature that could get pack the parking lot and need off-site parking. We talked to them about trying to find places where they would shuttle people in and park off-site. So there's a whole, whole um, series of things, evolutions and discussions as far as what to do with that road once it's built. I think Director Binsky asked and I told him it was a good idea to talk to the uh, Sports Dome people to get some feedback from them also, make them aware that we're considering the, this, this type of action. So. I don't know if that totally answers your question, but it it's kind of was uh, a, a large discussion uh, wrapped around that issue. Thank you. It helps a lot. I'm just going to think about it. Now. Your Honor. Yes, it seems like we might have a few more questions. We'll do Councillor Gibson and then Councillor Vincent. Yeah, I drive that road on a regular basis. There is no way you're going to be able to park on that road. It's unless you reline the road to one side or the other, there's not enough room to get any kind of parking in because there's no shoulder, no nothing there. Uh, so I would say no parking is the only way to go there unless you want to invest some major money in upgrading the road. Thank you. Councilor Vincent, is yours a question? Yes, or if, you I may, yes Your Honor, if I may comment on miscellaneous which was the speed limit reduction on Otis Road. Um, I brought that to uh, the city manager's attention to bring it at the, up at the meeting, and I apologize for not making the meeting. I did make adequate uh, requests for uh, someone to fill in. Council Mishu did, and I thank him for that. It's because I've, for the past f half six months, I've been driving down Otis Road, seeing people walk along this narrow road, narrow winding road, may I add, and may I just make a, uh, uh, a correction. It's not 35 miles an hour on Otis Road. It's posted at 30 miles an hour. 
And you say, well, what's the difference in reducing five miles an hour? I found that if you put a 25 mile, and there's only one speed limit, maybe two speed limit signs on each end. I find that if you put a um, speed limit sign that says strictly enforced, it just brings the awareness to people um, to slow down. Um, you know, like I was saying, people walk their dog and people are jumping out of the way. Uh, I have the pleasure of driving that early in the morning and in the afternoon. And um, I'm sure, and I've talked to some of the residents there, they say it's, it's terrible. They're actually jumping out of the way. And you talk about um, no injuries. There was an accident that involved um, Andy Lucia, who used to be our um, um, maintenance for the school system, school district. Uh, and he, he sustained a, a serious uh, shoulder injury. That actually, I think it he went out on disability. Maybe I'm wrong, but to this day, I talked to him this past week. He still has a shoulder problem with it. Um, I just think it would be a good measure. Now, listen, I know traffic safety doesn't make the decisions. They only pass it on to the, to the council here. Um, it's a dangerous road. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Other reports of special committees? Yes. Councillor Goodwin. Thank you. Uh, the Eyes on 30 uh, committee met uh, directly before the meeting this evening, the council meeting this evening, and we continued the conversation that we have been having, uh, sorting through the committee's goals and priorities, um, and working to prioritize uh, a top three to five items that the committee itself can start moving forward with, um, while also creating a, a document that can be handed to uh, the planning board, the council, and staff uh, for incorporation into the master plan. Uh, and just for the benefit of, of folks here, the top three items that were selected uh, are a community mapping effort. So mapping, working with the community to identify neighborhoods, um, community assets, um, and then sort of as part of this, layering on existing efforts with um, sidewalk improvements and thinking about off-trail, off street uh, trails and networks um, so that we have a series of maps that um, identify uh, the city in uh, more comprehensive uh, language and um, how it connects to its, uh, itself. <clears throat> um, in a related to that, wayfinding was the next item, um, thinking particularly around the downtown and aiding uh, wayfinding to parking and around uh, community assets in the downtown. Um, and then city beautification was the third item and uh, was actually a new item that was brought up during the uh, prioritization conversation. So we are still drilling down into you know, what that means uh, sort of as an action item. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? Yes, Councilor Parity Captain Zero. Uh, yes, just wanted to um, announce that the uh, communi Community Outreach and Communications Committee will next meet on July 9th, which is uh, before we meet again. So just wanted to make sure folks knew that. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? All right, seeing none, I will turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Anna. Provide the following comments that were included in my manager's report and meeting packet for this evening. I'm going to, I have nothing further to add in regards to unfinished business, so I'll jump right into new business. The first resolution being introduced, 5424, regarding authorizing the manager to waive bidding requirements and extend the contract with RMI, Resource Management Inc. of Holderness, New Hampshire, for lagoon maintenance at the Summersworth Water Treatment Plant. Uh, this is being brought forward with a recommendation from the Public Works and Environment Committee who voted on June 3rd to support this resolution to the full body here. Uh, I do note that M um, RMI, Resource Management Inc., has provided these services to the city since 2018. We've been very pleased with uh, their performance. Uh, staff recommended them to the Public Works Committee to continue their contract. Uh, attached, I provided a copy of a memorandum uh, that Director Babinski uh, provided to the Public Works and Environment Committee and went over with them uh, during our discussion at the committee level. 
The next resolution, 5524, authorizes the manager to enter into a grant agreement with New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources for Educational Training. Uh, this is being presented to send the Director of Planning and Community Development to the National Alliance of Preservation Commission's Forum Conference. It's a mouthful. Uh, I provided you a memo from uh, Director Mayers regarding the grant and uh, kind of a late addition to the agenda, so I apologize, but uh, I would ask you for your consideration to provide uh, waive rules and provide a second reading since the grant deadline uh, to provide council approval is the end of June. It should be going in, uh, to the conference in July. Uh, under info items, wastewater treatment plant, um, Mayor Girding has scheduled a council workshop for July 15th prior to our next regular council meeting at 5.30. Wright Pierce engineers will provide a presentation on the wastewater treatment plant, what, what improvements we've already completed, and the strategy that they have recommended and that we've embraced over the years moving forward to meet the city's potential needs as we embark upon the next upgrade at the facility. Uh, New Hampshire Highway Safety Traffic Enforcement Grant, this has uh, been an annual grant process for many years. Um, they recently changed the process where they now require uh, the uh, governing body to uh, review grant documents and to actually vote on accepting the grant. So um, I did provide you a memo from Chief uh, Macklin outlining the grant opportunity. And without objection, I'll be authorizing him to move forward in securing any available grant funding, which is, includes distracted driving, extra patrols, um, where we hire our officers to go on overtime, um, you know, might be enforcing uh, red lights, speeding, distracted driving, and, and whatnot. Without objection. What, if we do receive the grant again, it'll be back on an agenda docket for a vote. Same thing with the next grant, Invest New Hampshire Municipal Demolition Grant. And again, a memorandum from uh, Director Mears was provided regarding the opportunity to move forward and work with developers to uh, actually try to secure funding for demolition purposes. The first one we would tackle would be the Elm Street. Even though they already demoed, they can get reimbursed uh, for the demolition. So if we do get the grant again, it'll be back on your docket to review and vote, vote for it. So we'll move forward with that unless council objects to moving forward with that process. That objection. Last, um, uh, regarding myself, city manager, it has been a privilege to serve this community as its manager. I have informed the mayor and city council that I will be retiring next June, 2025. It has been my honor to have worked alongside professional staff over the years, as well as many dedicated elected and appointed officials, all of whom have and continue to make this community second to none. I look forward to completing my 20th and final year as city manager of the Hilltop City, and uh, I thank you all for your support. That concludes my report, Your Honor. Thank you, and again, a heartfelt Congrats, and it's really been an honor to get to sit beside you. I know I got a whole nother year, but um, I know uh, it was probably not an easy decision, but we are so, so grateful to have had uh, you with us for 20 years. So thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, that brings us to agenda item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward and placed in nomination. David Nagy for appointment to the Conservation Commission as an alternate member with a term to expire June 2027. Tony Karen for appointment as Ward 3 select person with a term to expire January 2026. And Terry Ritter for appointment as Ward 2 select person with a term to expire January 2026. Nominees will remain in nomination until the next regularly scheduled council meeting. Uh, also, under appointments and elections tonight, we have the city council vote to fill the vacancy of the Ward 3 school board member position until the next municipal or state election. Again, it will be September 10th, uh, the state primary. Uh, two nominees are as follows. We have Bridget Jameson, 
and Tony Karen. Uh, so again, before we open to discussion, I just want to explain the process for the vote. Uh, this will be handled similar to how we handled uh, the vote for our city council appointment, which was, I believe, last month. Um, so momentarily, I will open it up to discussion from you all, for, uh, hoping that our counselors uh, can discuss the candidates, uh, openly share who they're interested in supporting and why, uh, so that we can all get a clear understanding of where everyone stands. Then when discussion is finished, um, we will have a roll call vote. Again, no motion will be necessary. Uh, and during the vote, I would ask that counselors please state the full name of the candidate that you are voting for, so first and last name. And at the end of the vote, the candidate with the most votes will be our new school board member. I just want to make sure, is the process clear? Is there a question, Councillor Gibson? Yes. Oh yeah, your microphone isn't on. I'm sorry, Councilor Gibson. If you wouldn't mind repeating yourself, oh, sorry. I just got alerted that it wasn't. Um, apologize. I apologize for bringing this up now. I just the thought just occurred to me. She lists herself as a classroom teacher in Summersworth, then school psychologist through 2024. <laughs> Can someone who is employed by the school district serve on the school board? Uh, the answer is no. However, I, without objection, would ask Ms. Jameson to come clarify whether she is still a current employee of the Summers or School District. Hi, I apologize if that wasn't clear. I work for Stratford Learning Center. Oh. So I do not work for Summers or. Perfect. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right, other questions about the process before we open it to discussion? Okay, seeing none, I will open it up to discussion. <coughs> yes, I think that was a hand, was that a hand? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was jumping at it. Councilor Parity Conzero. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll get it started. Um, I reviewed uh, both of the letters and I wanna thank uh, Ms. Jameson for coming in and speaking in person tonight as well. Um, I am looking to support Bridget Jamerson uh, based on extensive qualifications in the letter um, and her comments here this evening. And uh, so that's where I'm standing. Thank you. Other comments by counselors? Yes, Councillor Goodwin. Just seconding exactly what Councillor Paradise Kanzara just said. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Witham and then Austin. Thank you. I plan to support Ms. Jamison as well. Uh, it certainly seems qualified. I appreciate the comments here tonight. But showing up and saying hello is, is most important. And I realize that not everybody can make time out of their schedule to show up, but you can make time out of your schedule to make a phone call. And so I appreciate that and that that that's a big part of this so your availability so I appreciate that thank you Councillor Austin yes thank you uh, my comments are sim uh, similar I think that uh, more as more as a uh, a comment toward future applicants for open positions when there's competition for those positions it's really uh, in your best interest to contact whoever the group is who's deciding whether you're going to get that position or not. In this case, it would be the city council to fill the school board seat. Uh, it would be really nice to get that individual contact, whether that's here or whether it's in some discussion that we've had before we come to this particular meeting. Uh, so in the future, people who are interested in those positions, you know, let, let's pick it up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cameron. Thank you. I, I certainly appreciate somebody showing up and introducing themselves so you have a face with a name instead of just wondering, who are they? And certainly your background speaks for itself, so I too will be in support of you tonight. Thank you. All right. Other discussion? Councilor Mishu? Yeah, thank you, Anna. I'm speaking from my own personal experience because six years ago this past April, four and five counselor then resigned the seat opened up and encouragement from some members of the community and some members on council encouraged me to put in for it. So what I personally did, reached out to each counselor and asked them for their you know, consider, consideration. I didn't ask for their vote, I asked for their consideration. 
And I appreciate that when someone comes forward and talks to me. Or, so, uh, Ms. Jameson, I appreciate you coming out and talking to us and putting a face to it, as other counselors said. I really appreciate it, so I will support you. Thank you. All right. Other discussion? Okay. Seeing none, um, we will move on to the vote. Again, there's no motion needed. When it is your turn to vote, you will again state the full name, first and last, of the candidate you would wish to vote for. So, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Vincent. Bridget Jamison. Gibson. Jamison. Parity Catanzaro. Bridget Jamison. Misho. Bridget Jamison. Witham. Bridget Jamison. Goodwin. Bridget Jamison. Cameron. Bridget Jamison. Austin. Bridget Jamison. All right. Ms. Jameson, you have been appointed our new Ward 3 school board member. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're going to have you get sworn in tomorrow, so if you could stop by City Hall, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That brings us to agenda item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none. Uh, brings us to item 15, which is unfinished business. First up, we have our ordinances. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 16-24, transfers between departments, which if approved, would transfer $1,253 from contingency to capital leases. City clerk. Ordinance number 1624, transfer between departments. Thank you. Ordinance 16-24 <coughs> have been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendments. Seeing no amendments, I will look for a motion on Ordinance 16-24. Councilor Witham. Move for the adoption of Ordinance 16 -24. I'll second that. Councilor Witham moves to the adoption of Ordinance 16-24, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Motion for the council is on the, dis uh, the adoption of Ordinance 16-24. Discussion? Councilor Witham. I, I would only state the obvious. This is such a de minimis amount. Uh, what it speaks to is the quality of not only budget preparation, but uh, following the budget throughout the year. Uh, and hats off to city manager, certainly finance director Smith and department heads for uh, keeping a close eye on our expenditures because this is as close as you can get without having a transfer ordinance. Yes. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of ordinance 16-24, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right, Ordinance 16-24 has been adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk <clears throat> for a second reading on Ordinance 17-24 to amend Chapter 4, Personnel Rules and Regulations, Appendix 1, Assignment of Class to Grade, which, if approved, would add the Assistant Library Director with a grade of 18, rename the title of the Library Adult Assistant to the Library Service Assistant, and add the deputy fire chief with a grade of 26. City clerk, will you please read, uh, do a second reading. Ordinance number 1724, to amend chapter four, personnel rules and regulations, appendix 1A, assignment of class to grade. Ordinance 17-24, have been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. All right, seeing no amendment, would uh, look for a motion on Ordinance 17-24. Councilor Austin. I'll move the adoption of Council Ordinance 17-24. Councilor Austin moves uh, to adopt Ordinance 17-24, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Uh, motion before the Council is on the adoption of Ordinance 17-24. Discussion. Yes, Councilor Mishu. Thank you. Um, I'm just to encourage the Council to move forward with this. This is basically uh, adding few positions that haven't been in this chapter before and they were just adding the new employees coming on board and also their pay grade. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none. Uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 17-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Uh, City Clerk, Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Misho. Yes. With them? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. All right. Ordinance 17 24 has been adopted. Uh, the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on Ordinance 18 24 to amend Chapter 4, Personnel Rules and Regulation, Appendix 2, Compensation Schedule, which, if approved, would adjust the compensation schedule to include the fiscal year 2024 2025 compensation schedule and a reflected increase of 6%. City Clerk. 
Ordinance number 1824 to amend chapter four personnel rules and regulations appendix appendix two compensation schedule. Ordinance 18-24 uh, having been read a first and second time is now open to further amendment. Yeah. Right. No amendment being offered. I'll look for a motion on ordinance 18-24. Yes, Councilor Goodwin. I move that we adopt. Councilor Goodwin moves for the adoption of ordinance 18-24 seconded by Councilor Austin. Motion for the council is on the adoption of ordinance 18-24. Discussion? Seeing none, if you're in favor of the adoption of ordinance 18-24, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Ordinance 18-24 has been adopted. Brings us to resolutions uh, in second reading. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolutions 52-24 to authorize the city manager to prepare a request for a proposal for the sale and reuse of city-owned property located on one Winter Street, formerly known as Brighton's Cleaners. City Clerk. Resolution number 5224 to authorize the city manager to prepare a request for proposals for the sale and reuse of city-owned property located at one Winter Street, formerly known as Brighton's Cleaners. Resolution 52-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. Councilor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> um, this uh, resolution came out of the Economic Development Committee, and unfortunately, by the time the draft uh, for the resolution was made, there was still some discussion around um, the site's eligibility for um, Chapter 31, the Community Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive. Um, we have since determined that the site is eligible, um, and I would like to amend uh, the resolution to include the following language. The City Council recognizes that this site is eligible for property tax relief for up to, to seven years under Ordinance Chapter 31, Community Revitalization Tax Relief, and relief Program, and that Council anticipates granting full relief for, qualifying, for a qualifying project at this site. Quick clarification, would that just be an additional bullet point within the section in the middle? Yes. Thank you. All right, so we have an amendment before us. Is there a second to the amendment? Second by Councilor Perry Catton Zero. Discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Question, what would the tax relief be based on? I'll turn it over to Councilor Goodwin to answer. Uh, so the um, Community Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive, when granted, freezes the assessed value of the property at the uh, date of the completion of the project. So if we, for instance, sold this to a developer, uh, it would then go back on the tax roll. The assessor would provide some assessed value for a vacant lot. Um, and then we would, if we granted a tax relief uh, for a housing project, let's say, the tax relief would go into effect when the certificate of occupancy was issued for those units and freeze the assessed value more or less at the value of a lot rather than seven units or, or units, and it will do that for seven years, and it is, allows the developer to uh, recoup um, some money in the early years of a project as an incentive. Councilor Gibson, you're still recognized. Any further questions? Um, do we have any idea what that value would be? approximately be as the lot stands now? Well, the lot is a non-taxed lot right now. There's no tax revenue in the lot. Councilor Gibson, are you, are you all set? I, I will only say this. I don't agree with that. The, um, you're basically going to receive re Excuse me. Receive zero tax benefit from this project for seven years. If that, am I reading this correctly? I would anticipate the city to receive minimal tax benefit for the period of seven years. Minimal or zero? Minimal. What would minimal look like? It depends on what. Once the once the that would be up to the assessor. Once the site is sold and on the tax roll again, the assessor would set the value for 
its current state, which is a vacant lot, and it would be taxed at that rate. That vacant lot is worth zero. All right, I'm going to ask that we don't have a cross discussion. If you have direct... I'm asking for clarification. Certainly, certainly. But again, I, I feel like we're kind of getting into this, like, back and forth. Debate. So there are a few other folks that do have had their hands raised. If you have further clarification, I'll happily come back to you. But let's just put that on pause <coughs> for a second. Councillor Witham and then Councillor Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at the risk of poking the hornet's nest again, <laughs> I, I do want to go down this road of... Uh, I recognize that we're not collecting any taxes on that property and haven't for uh, a, a long time now. Uh, question for the city manager. Uh, even though we don't collect taxes, does the property not have an assessed value? Yes. Do we know what that is? Um, no, we're going through a revaluation, so we'll have a new value at some point. Um, just as Councillor Goodwin uh, indicated, it's, it's going to be minimal because it has the sewer line through it. It has uh, uh, monitoring wells. It's uh, restricted by the railroad tracks and a wall. So, again, I, I don't have the value, but it's going to be um, very low. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. And I know that we have to stay focused on the amendment. Correct. But with the amendment, it splashes over, so to speak, to the resolution. If, again, Which, I would ask that you contain your discussion to the amendment. We will have right. a discussion on the full resolution. And I plan on it, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So this break of taxes is just a bigger mess than what this is. And staying on the amendment... The city will never make a dime on this property. Thank you. Councillor Perry Canzero and then Gibson. Um, yes, uh, supporting this amendment, um, this is the type of tax relief that we've given to um, a lot of formerly unusable derelict properties in town to help spur development. Um, the last time that we did an RFP for this location, fairly similar to this, we've added a couple of things. We the last time we did an RFP for this location, uh, we got zero responses. So this is sort of our last ditch effort to allow, to see if with these few, let's say bonuses, something, some little carrot to bring someone to a table, if that would allow it to be developable. Developable. Um, so this amendment, I think, helps with that last ditch effort before we, you know, get into the next uh, discussion, which would be, you know, parking lot was the last version. I don't know what our other options are, but this is sort of a last ditch effort to try to get this into taxable territory. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. I'm all in favor of finding a way to develop this property, but the city's already taking responsibility for the wall, taking responsibility for the monitoring wells. And, you know, we're talking right off the bat that uh, unless this is a multi-million dollar project, it's going to be a net loss when you figure those in and you prorate the tax rate upward. Um, you know, maybe I'm just bad at math. I don't know. I don't see how the numbers on this are going to add up. If the project does not make sense without the tax relief. We're going to do Councillor Austin and then Goodwin. Thank you. I th I've been going back and forth on the amendment. I, th I actually think this is probably more appropriate discussion at the time that we actually have an offer on the table and, and have a little more foundation with the information that we'd be looking at. Uh, I see adding it to this resolution as something that may lock the council in later, although I'm certainly uh, confident that somebody will argue that it doesn't do that. I think that 
uh, the wording that says, and the council anticipates granting full relief of a qualifying project certainly would give a developer the understanding that the council is already leaning in that direction. I'm not sure that's a position we want to take right now. So I, I'm not going to support the amendment. Thank you, Councilor Goodwin. Um, uh, Councilor Austin uh, is correct, and in the intent of the amendment is to provide qualified developers with specific guidance on what the community has identified as wanting in this lot and then us as a council identifying to them that we are willing to work with them with all the levers we have available with specific language. So we could remove, we could, this amendment could fail, and that developer would still be entitled when they have a project to come before us and ask for 790 and we could ask at that time. I strongly suspect, based on the other 790 projects that have come before this council, that it would be approved if it was a qualified project because we are interested in that lot being developed. So I'm asking council now to, and you're not locking in, we're, there's word anticipates is in there, we can't give them a vote ahead of a vote, but I'm asking to include this language so that we provide an additional layer of confidence for folks responding to this RFP that we are willing to roll up our sleeves and work with them as a last ditch effort to get this property back into productive use for the community. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Michu. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna support this just for the fact that it doesn't matter if we have it or not, if we put it in, it's still gonna to come to us if we do have a developer interest in this property, and then we will decide if that property deserves the 79E Chapter 31. So we can decide now, but <coughs> over the big picture, when it, if a developer comes forward, we can devote then if yes or no on this. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, we're gonna vote on the adoption of the amendment. Roll call vote, please, Your Honor. Yep. yep. Call vote sounds good to me as well. Without objection. Um, so, if you are in favor of the amendment as presented, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. No. Vincent. No. Gibson. No. Parody Cotton Zero. Yes. Misho. Yes. With them. No. We have a tie. Congratulations. Oh. Wow, this, was a, this happened so early <laughs> already. Well, how long have I been in office? My God. I will vote yes. All right, adoption, or excuse me, amendment has been adopted. <coughs> Your Honor. Yes. I Councilor have an Witham. amendment I'd like to offer. All right, Councilor Witham has an amendment he'd like to offer. If you were to number the bullet points uh, one through seven, bullet point five speaks to the dimensional limitations of the site, which I think we're all well familiar with. So. I think we've already recognized that, and a developer would certainly recognize that. My concern with this is the language that say that the city will support a s the selected developer's attainment of appropriate waivers from the zoning board of adjustment and or planning board if required. Uh, I'm not sure, exactly sure what that means, support. Uh, I certainly can't support waivers without any uh, feedback from abutters. As you know, when a developer seeks either waivers from the planning board or um, uh, zoning adjustments from the ZBA, there are abutter notifications and you have abutter feedback. So uh, this would imply that I'm supporting something without that abutter feedback. So my uh, motion is to uh, amend this to remove bullet item five. All right, is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Gibson. Discussion? Councillor Goodwin. <clears throat> I, I, I get the uh, desire for not um, wanting to appear as though the public process is not going to play out. I'm curious if there might be a way, rather than removing this, to again identifying the city's willingness to consider uh, 
which is really redundant because we are always willing to consider, um, uh, you know, vari uh, variances or conditional use permits or whatever the case may be to support development here. Acknowledging that this site is a incredibly challenging site uh, to build on, uh, I think it would be helpful to indicate that um, we are aware of that and are mindful that if we want something to happen here that waivers may be required. Again, we would not be preemptively committing to any of those things, but um, that was the intent of this item. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor uh, Gibson. I have to agree with Councillor Whittem, uh, and you know, open to consider, no offense, but in the business world, that's like writing a blank check to me. The, um, by inferring it, you're basically saying that, hey, yeah, go for it. Before anything even is presented, before, as Councillor Whittem said, before our butters have a chance to say how they feel about a project. I don't like being tied into con preconditional statements in a proposal like this. Um, so I would be in favor of Councillor Whittem's amendment to strike the motion, that section. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Parity Catanzaro and then Goodwin. Um, yeah, I think I will, um, I would not support striking it. I may, <coughs> if it com comes up, support a slight reword. I think um, my goal is to try to get any sort of a proposal before us and knowing that until we have a proposal before us, we can't take any action. Um, I want to send all the signals possible that we are willing to work with people. There's a reason that we haven't gotten proposals before, and I think I want um, to have the best chance of trying to get something in front of us. So I would not support striking that. Councilor Goodwin. For sake of discussion, and obviously this is not the motion, but I think rather than striking the entirety of bullet five, striking the second half following the first comma. So the, and then the bullet would read, the city shall recognize the dimensional limitations of the site and anticipates a project that ranges from two to 12 housing units with accessory commercial space on the ground floor, period. So therefore the zoning language is removed, but we are still acknowledging that we are aware the site has dimensional limitations, which I think does do something to. Uh, I am okay with that friendly amendment if Councilor Gibson is. Councilor Gibson? I will. All right, friendly amendment accepted, it seems. Discussion on the amendment as yeah. now. Everything I do is friendly. Yes. Councilor Perry Catton's there. Um, yeah, I would support that. I think that um, does the job of clarifying that, uh, you know, as it stands now, it's zoned for practically nothing. So by us saying, you know, we recognize the limitation and we do anticipate, and then the language that we have all as a community come up with, which is that we want some housing and some commercial space, lets them know that we are willing to approve more than just a vacant lot. So I support that. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor Whitman. I'll, I'll support it because it merely states the obvious, but <laughs> there's no harm in that. All right. Other discussion? All right, seeing none. I just want to clarify the amendment. The amendment is to remove on the fifth bullet point, point removing the and will support the selected developer's attainment of appropriate waivers from the zoning board and adjust of adjustments and or planning board if required and. All right. So again, we're going to do another roll call vote, if that's all right, folks. If you're in favor of the adoption of this amendment, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Vincent? No. Gibson? Yes. Parity Catanzaro? Yes. Isho? Yes. All right, the amendment is approved. Other amendments tonight? Okay. Seeing none. Um, I lost
lost my train of thought. Seeing none, the motion before the council is on the adoption of. Uh, you, you need a motion. Oh, I do to need a motion. Adopt I got a motion. As Thank amended, you. But Thank I'm not you. making that. All right, I will be looking for a motion. And put my apologies, Councillor Parody Catanzaro. I'll make the motion to adopt this as amended. All right. Is there a second? Seconded by Councillor Goodwin. All right. So the motion before council is the the adoption of resolution 52-24 discussion. So this is on the whole thing. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. When I look at this resolution, this is a garbage on a piece of paper. The city is going to pay for 30 years of ongoing well cost monitoring? What do you think that's going to cost? They're going to take care of the wall in case it falls down? What's that going to cost? Then on top of it, we want to give them seven years off uh, taxes. And I hear nobody's ever bid on this property. That's not true. We, most of us sat here and shot down Domino's Pizza with apartments because people came in and said they didn't want it. We had the property sold for $200,000 and we're going to give it away for a penny? I'll tell you right now. This passes tonight. I want to offer the city two cents. You'll get 100% on your investment right now tonight. I'll give two cents and I'll develop that property. This right here... I don't know. There's a lot of smart people on this, on this committee here that sent this out, but I don't know where we're going with this. Please explain. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. Thank you. Um, just to speak to some of the uh, items uh, mentioned, the uh, property is currently owned by the city, and the city uh, currently pays and will continue to pay in perpetuity for monitoring costs so long as New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services requires monitoring on the site. Um, so if we are unable to sell the site to a developer, then that is a cost that the taxpayers will bear in perpetuity anyways. Um, and it is a, a significant hindrance to redevelopment of the parcel because that is not an insignificant cost given the dimensional constraints for redevelopment on the site. So let's say you can build a four unit apartment building there. Well, that project is now financially burdened by roughly $15,000 a year in environmental reporting costs. And that math doesn't math for a developer and that project isn't gonna move forward. And the city, should that project not move forward, doesn't benefit from future tax revenue that that project would generate, which it's currently not generating on the site, and the economic benefit of those housing units in the downtown. <clears throat> so uh, I would say that the monitoring costs are a sunk cost that we are already, already have and that we, uh, this is simply acknowledging that that is a burden that the city is going to carry for taking this uh, property and re doing remediation. Um, that's my, my thought on that. And the uh, similar is true with the retaining wall that retaining wall is uh, largely a legacy, I would say, of just poor um, uh, lot delineation. You know, back when lots were were surveyed, that uh, retaining wall supports Winter Street, a publicly maintained and owned street. Um, so there's, it's in the public interest for that wall to be maintained. If we sold the property without that um, maintenance agreement and that wall failed, Winter Street would collapse and would need to be rebuilt presumably by the city. And it's not fair to put the maintenance of that wall on a private property owner, in my opinion. Um, past efforts on this property have solicited, uh, you know, Councillor Witham stated earlier that some of this stuff is stating the obvious. Uh, and I think it's worth stating the obvious because we have had prior proposals on this site and they were either not feasible because they were dimensionally too ambitious, trying to fit more than can actually fit on the site given the limitations and the city's inability to move a sewer line, and or did not conform with recent community planning efforts, particularly around uh, form-based codes in the downtown, and 
they failed, right? So we're trying to target the language here to be very explicit about what we understand to be the uh, narrow opportunity for development here as a last ditch effort to turn this property back to productive use. Um, and if we fail in finding that private party uh, to do that, then we will be maintaining that wall in perpetuity and we'll be paying, <laughs> we'll be paying those monitoring fees in perpetuity and we won't have tax revenue on the property ever. And uh, you know, we can try to find some other public benefit that taxpayers will have to pay for because the site is unimproved. So you know, the economic development goal here was to try and, again, return this to productive use, build housing, get tax revenue, acknowledging the other costs are largely sunk. Thank you. Go on. Other discussion? Councillor Witham, then Councillor Vincent. Thank you. I stay. I'll, I need some more time as this debate goes on to think about how it will, whether or not I will support uh, this resolution. Uh, I'm leaning towards supporting it. My hesitation comes from uh, a look back at our journey we took with the National Guard property, where the mayor, Mayor Hilliard at the time, formed a committee. Uh, Your Honor, you and I sat on that. Um, to look at uh, reuse of the National Guard property. Uh, we, with grant funds, endeavored some work with the Stratford Regional Planning Commission, uh, came up with uh, three options, ultimately whittled it down to one, which was uh, housing uh, and townhomes was the, the, the thought process. That got brought in front of this full council. It got shot down rather aggressively. Uh, went back to the drawing board, and here we are some years later uh, looking to sell that parcel to do what? To build townhomes. Why does this property sound similar? Because the council had acquiesced not too long ago around uh, building uh, a parking lot there, uh, uh, some return on the investment that we made by leasing spaces, uh, understanding full well all of the limitations uh, of the site. Um, the retaining wall, uh, the large sewer line that bisects the property, it's either 24 or 36 inch, it's very large, so hence very difficult to move. Uh, I'll never say impossible, you can do stuff, it's just crazy money. Um, the site limitations, the railroad tracks, the dimensional qualities of the site, parking restrictions, so on and so forth. So part of me says, we're going to do this, and I guess there's no harm and foul with doing this, which is why I'm probably leaning to support it, but it's just procrastinating on what I think ultimately will be the end result, which is a parking lot there, mm -hmm. because you can't do much else there. But prove me wrong. Uh, <clears throat> with regard to the almost sale of the property some years ago for $200,000. Uh, I won't say that I was duped there, but certainly wasn't willing to spend the political capital to do what might have been the right thing at the time was to sell that parcel. Because I knew at the time that if we said no to Domino's that they would likely just relocate somewhere else. I thought somewhere else in the city. Uh, oh, shame on me not to think that they would go across the bridge to Berwick uh, where their sign is visible from said site. So I'm not sure that that has had uh, lesser impact on our businesses than it otherwise would have. But as a city councilor, when you're elected, you get a bucket of political capital, and some votes spend more of that bucket than others, and that one would have dumped a lot of it. So I acquiesced and said, no, let's not sell that property. And here we are. So. Uh, again, I'll probably support this just because there's no harm, no foul, but I do believe that we'll probably have the same end result. Thank you. Councillor Vincent and Austin. Thank you, Your Keep in mind that the last time we had the sale that people came out and didn't want it, the well monitoring cost went with the sale. The city didn't have any part of that, if I do recall correctly. Another thing is, is that 
if you don't test the waters, why would you test the waters with a dollar? If you don't test the waters again with something bigger, then you'll never know if you can get it. Now, all due respect to the counselor here, to my right, you know, it's only a matter of his opinion that that type of business, you try to structure it. But keep in mind, this council actually holds all the marbles, so to speak. They hold the rules. Yeah, we make the rules, and yeah, we can change them, because that's what happens in this business. We could change it to what we want to do down there. Another thing is, is that there's a sewerage easement running right through that property. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I'm a builder, I'm a developer, I've had rental property to turn around for one dollar. It just doesn't make sense. And then to have the burden of what we don't know for well monitoring. Oh, well, you know what? We got well monitoring now. Yeah, okay. So let's just keep it going, right? Let's just keep it going, right? No, let's get rid of that well monitoring with the sale of the, bill, of the, of the property. Another thing is that this city is in such dire straits for parking. Counselors, don't lose don't lose sight of what goes on here. We had people come here when the Domino's Pizza was going to go in, and they said, the biggest problem is parking. We have no parking. So if you're going to give it away for a dollar and make no tax income at all for seven years, and then you don't know what it's going to be because as we suck up that well monitoring fee, you might not ever make money on it. Make it a parking lot. Make it a parking lot so people can, we can even get permit uh, parking down there. We'll make some revenue from it. We're always in such dire straits to sell all our property. I've always been against it. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, and you know how I am, counselors, I'm pretty outspoken. Um, this resolution's terrible. And Councilor Austin, then Gibson, and then Parity Catanzaro. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Having served on the Economic Development Committee in the past and having reviewed a number of proposals for this property, I don't object to putting out an RFP again if, if we think that that's the right thing to do. But, um, you know, Council Goodwin makes, makes the point quite elo eloquently that we're ha we have all these costs now and in order to entice a developer, we'll tell them we're going to keep those costs in our pocket and you're not going to have to uh, absorb those. I get that. That was a lot of the stumbling block of getting any credible proposals in the past. Uh, my biggest concern here is the combination of the lack of financial income to the city, both in terms of the, the time that we won't collect taxes or minimal taxes on the property and the fact that we're willing to sell it for a dollar. I think that the combination of those two things sets us up so that we would never uh, have a property that does anything to benefit the city other than provide some minimal housing opportunities. Um, that's, that's my concern with this whole uh, resolution, and I'm not sure which way I'm going with it at this point. The Councilor Gibson, Parity Captain Zero, and then Goodwin. Councilor Gibson. Right off the bat, it's 10 years, it's not seven years, because my understanding is it doesn't kick in until after the property is actually completed, which they have up to three years, thank you. You're not getting out of the well monitoring cost, you're not getting out of maintaining the uh, wall and the, you're accepting all these costs, and if you prorate the zero income in taxes plus the costs that you're assuming, 
you're going to be close to 50 years down the road before you see any net value out of that. And whether or not it will actually add to the economic development of the downtown, nobody knows. You can't be sure what's going to happen. Um, there are other restricting factors in the downtown that make developing our downtown very difficult as it is. I can't support this resolution as constructed now with the amendment because I just feel that the, in the long run, if we're going to be eating those costs anyways, I almost have to agree with Mr. Vincent that we might as well turn it into a parking lot and rent parking spaces. Thank you. Councillor Parity Count Zero, and then Goodwin. And then with yes, thank you. Um, I'm still in support of this uh, <coughs> resolution. I think um, the long-term sustainable value to the city is going to go up dramatically if there is number one, housing, and number two, any sort of economic development, which is commercial on the ground floor. Um, I think we all know that housing is an issue. Um, and seven years of less taxes than we would have gotten, sure, it's a little bit of a hit in the short term. Um, but I would not trade 200000 up front for the rest of the life of this property in tax revenue year eight, year 11, whatever year we start getting full taxable revenue and year three or year, you know, whatever the project finishes, we immediately get housing, we get more commercial. Um, but all of this is conjecture. I'd like to um, see this go forward so that we can actually have a proposal on the table to make um, a decision about. Um, <clears throat> and I guess I, I am hearing a little bit of apples and oranges. Um, if the goal is to make it a parking lot, Sure, there's some parking revenue, but we're also going to have the other continued costs. So it sounds like what some folks would support is selling it, period, trying to get it off um, off of our plate to do those things. And I think this is probably the best possible chance that we have to do that. Um, if we pave it over, make it a parking lot, it's going to be very difficult to do anything other than that in the future. And I'm not sure that parking revenue is going to be um, as much benefit to the city as housing, commercial, business, and tax revenue in a few more years. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Goodwin, then with them. Thank you. I, I would note for those um, struggling with uh, the sale price and 790 as a combination incentive, it is not the first time that a low sale price and 790 have been combined. Typically, they are done ad hoc, as in the developer comes and responds and then negotiates these things separately. Um, but Hilltop School is one example uh, where the sale price was low. I don't recall what it was, but uh, not much. Um, and that project was granted 790. And it was a successful housing project. Um, and transform really, you know, transformative to that neighborhood. Um, another one would be the police station. Again, there was a slightly higher sell price, but the assessed value of that property was quite low given its condition, and they were also granted 79E. And the only difference here is there's no structure on the site, so the assessed value is just slightly lower because it's a lot. But in terms of in terms of the mechanics of what we are uh, providing, it is the same mechanics. And we also have historic projects that go further back, all the way to the Grant School and other municipal buildings. 79E did not exist at that time, but the city did sell those properties for a dollar, acknowledging the incredible cost it would take uh, to preserve those buildings um, and trying to make uh, economic development happen. And those were also successful projects. So there is a track record of providing both of these incentives together. Um, and you know, to uh, Councillor Parity Catanzaro's point, um, I think parking is a, a solid plan B in my opinion, um, but I do think it, in the long term it will be more expensive to taxpayers because the city will be retaining all of the monitoring costs without 
um, taxable income. I don't think parking income is going to be uh, major on this site. I <clears throat> a quick site assessment. It fits about 35 parking spaces. Um, so $15,000 a year divided by 12 divided by 35, you'd be needing to make $35 a month off of each of those parking spaces for you to be at break even just on monitoring, let alone the construction of the parking lot itself. Um, so food for thought. Thank you, Councillor Witham. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Again, as I continue to sort of vacillate, but would support this. The bullet points outline with some clarity that the site has limitations in terms of its dimensions. Uh, we want an easement to, main, to be able to access the retaining wall. We want an easement to access the sewer line, which I'll let someone a whole lot smarter than me tell me when I need to know how you maintain a sewer line underneath of a building or if the building is arched. I, I don't know, but I'm willing to work with this, right, because there are people smarter than me. However, I also know that developers, and we heard this with, with other properties here in town, uh, somewhat recently the Elm Street project where, you know, they, they scaled back on some building materials and some other site components because there's a cost to all of that. They're going to rent the units for so much. There's just a, there's a business model. In the business model here, if someone says, yes, I'd like to uh, respond to this RFP, may be that all they can afford to buy the property for is a dollar. But maybe they could buy it for $10,000. Or maybe they could buy it for $5,000. Uh, and it seems that at least the sale price of a dollar is a bit of a hang up with some counselors. So with that being said, why not just let the developer offer up without boxing them in here? So I'd like to offer another uh, amendment, and that's to eliminate bullet item number seven that speaks to the sale price of $1. I'll second that. Thank you. Amendment to remove bullet item number seven, to, which states the city will support the sale of the parcel for $1 with a uh, covenant ensuring project completion and occupancy <coughs> within three years of closing, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Discussion on the amendment. Yes, Councillor Gibson. With that removed, I can start to lean into this a little bit more. Um, my big concern is all along with this is the sunk costs that we're retaining. And maybe Mr. Vincent could speak to this a little better than I could. You got a retaining wall there. What happens if that wall does go? We're accepting responsibility for the wall. What if that shifts the foundation on the property? Okay, because if you're waiving all limitations, as seems to be inferred by this proposal, uh, we now have to pay to rebuild the property. Well, <laughs> I may decide to vote in favor, but I really have reservations about this whole proposal. And I will admit, in committee I forwarded it, but the more I thought about it, the more I have problems with it. Any further discussion on the amendment? Councilor Goodwin. Uh, I'd support removing the um, bullet seven for the sale of $1. I do think it is helpful to indicating the extent of uh, relief that we'd be willing to provide for a highly qualified project. Um, but if that makes folks uncomfortable, then we can let developers respond with whatever they see fit. Um, to me, the difference between $1 and $10,000 is essentially meaningless <laughs> um, for the city, but um, so be it. I'm happy to have that removed if that uh, allows us to solicit uh, our uh, respondents to this RFP one last time. 
Okay, other discussion on the amendment? Councilor Perdi, Catanzaro, and then Vincent. Um, this may be a question. I guess I'll just uh, vocalize the musing, and then if anybody wants to respond. Um, I remembered talking about this in committee around the th occupancy within three years. Um, again, the sale price is, is less important than having it tied to a date where they're actually starting to provide more value to the city. So I would support this amendment if others do. I would also support it um, moving that um, covenant ensuring project completion and occupancy within three years of closing somewhere else. Um, if that's not a concern for others, if it goes four or five years um, in exchange for that one dollar versus whatever um i'm fine with that but that's those are my thoughts currently on removing that bullet point thank you your honor so i have a hard time accepting that ten thousand dollars is meaningless and i'll tell you why because we are the check holders here and the people of the city of summers earth who pay the taxes and live here they have the money but we sign the checks so every time we spend a dime here, we're spending our constituents and everybody that pays taxes in this community, $10,000 is a lot of money for some people. They'll never have that in their life. So please, just be careful with your wording, because $10,000 is a lot better than one buck. Other discussion on the amendment? Yes, Councilor Perry Zero. Um, yeah, I kind of wish that we had done a little bit more background here um, and built out the actual costs that are built in here. I think our long-term goal is to create revenue for the city um, and not just a short-sighted one-time sale. So I'll, I'll continue to be supporting this. Thanks. All right, amendment before us is to remove the seventh bullet point, which states the city will support the sale of the parcel for $1 with a covenant ensuring project completion and occupancy within three years of closing. Seeing no discussion, we're going to uh, vote on the amendment. If you're in favor of the amendment, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. This will be a roll call vote. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. Great, thank you all. Point of order, Your Honor? Yes. I'd like to make a motion if I can. Uh, related to the resolution? Yep. Yes. Sure. I'd like to table resolution 5224. Right. there's a motion on the table uh, before us to table resolution 52-24, seconded by Councilor Gibson. I believe this is non debatable. Uh, so if you are in favor of tabling resolution 52-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Catanzaro? No. Misho? No. Witham? No. Goodwin? No. Cameron? No. Austin? No. All right, motion fails. So <coughs> discussion on, is still open on resolution 52-24. Councilor Cameron? You had a point earlier, or waved me down earlier. I'll let you go first if you still have your point. I did, um, and what I was going to say was that, you know, we've had difficult decisions on difficult properties many times over and over, and sometimes these discussions going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, we're not getting anywhere. And this went back in front of the Economic Development Committee, and they came up with their recommendations to try to give guidelines to a developer as to what to do with this property. And I will be in support of this because I think even, you know, we may not even get anything. Who knows? I mean, we don't know until we try again. And, and it could come back in front of us again and again, like some other pieces of property have before. But I think if we don't try, we're not going to know. So I think we have to try with the proposed recommendations and just see where we go. We can always make recommendations to a developer as well. Everything's not cast in stone yet, but I think we have to try. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson. I agree with what Councilor Cameron is saying, basically, except for one thing. 
as this motion is constructed, you're putting in preconditions for any proposal that, what's a good way to put it? I've been in real estate, I've owned rental property, and I'll tell you what, when somebody hands me a blank ship, I have no problem taking it. And this is what I feel this motion as constructed is presenting to anybody considering developing. Um, I want to see the property developed, I agree. Mm. I just have a problem with the way this ended up being worded. I just have trouble really supporting it as constructed. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, the motion before us is to adopt resolution 52-24 as amendment amended. Amendments include the addition of a bullet point regarding uh, 79E. I don't have the language in front of me, I apologize. Uh, the removal of a section of the fifth bullet point, which essentially states uh, that we would, uh, uh, that the developer would attain appropriate waivers from zoning board and planning board, and the removal of the seventh bullet point regarding the sale of the parcel for a dollar. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 52-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Parity Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Vincent? No. Gibson? No. All right. Resolution 52-24 has been adopted. By the way, no. Okay. I'm sorry. We heard. I have to make a point of clarification. I'm sure. Oh, I apologize. I thought that was Councillor no. Gibson. I don't sound anything. For the record, Councillor Gibson voted no. no. <laughs> All right. It was a little brief moment of levity. I appreciate it. All right. Moving on. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 53-24 to authorize the city manager to accept property adjacent to city-owned property uh, currently leased to Hideout Golf Inc. via a lot line adjustment from Route excuse me, from 385 Route 16 Realty Corp doing business as Ron Courier and Hilltop Chevrolet. City Clerk. Resolution number 5324 to authorize the city manager to accept property adjacent to city-owned property currently leased by Hideout Golf Inc. via a lot line adjustment from 385 Route 16 Realty Corp doing business as Ron Courier and Hilltop Chevrolet. <coughs> All right, resolution 53-24 having been read a first and second time is now open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment, uh, I would look for a motion on Resolution 53-24. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I make a motion that we accept Resolution 53-24. Councilor uh, Vincent moves for the adoption of Resolution 53-24, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Motion for the Council is on the adoption of 50, uh, Resolution 53-24. Discussion? Councilor Vin uh, Witham? Excuse yeah, me. it's about the size of one Winter Street, so maybe we'll sell <laughs> one and we'll get one. I don't know. Other discussion? <laughs> All right, Maybe seeing none. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 53-24, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Catanzaro? Yes. Bisho? Yes. Resolution 53-24 has been adopted. Uh, next is agenda item 16, which is new business. First up. Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the two new business items be read by title only. Thank you. The motion before the council is to read both resolution 54-24 and 55-24 by title only, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Uh, discussion. All right, seeing none, uh, let's just do a voice vote. If you are in favor of the adoption. Oh, yes, go ahead, Councilor Purdy. Um, I believe the second one uh, was recommended or requested by the um, city manager to waive rules and vote on that this evening. So uh, So we'll have a first reading if the motion passes uh, oh, just and then by we title can. only. Great. And then if it is the wish of the council, you can make a motion to read. Uh, Perfect, for a thank time. you. Yep. Um, so again, the motion before the council is to read uh, resolutions 54-24 and 55-24 by title only. If you are in favor of this motion, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Uh, All those opposed? Yes. No. <laughs> no. Sorry, my apologies. I should have said I. Uh, yes, it choose. appears to have passed. Thank you. So, uh, mm -hmm. again, Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading by title only on Resolution 54-24, which is to authorize the city manager to waive bidding requirements and extend the contract with Resource Management, Inc. of Holderness, New Hampshire, for lagoon maintenance at the Summersworth Water Treatment Plant. City Clerk. Resolution number 5424, to authorize the city manager to waive bidding requirements and extend the contract with Resource Management, Inc., RMI, of Holderness, New Hampshire, for lagoon maintenance at the Summersworth Water Treatment Plant. Thank you. Resolution 54-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading by title only on resolution 55-24 to authorize the city manager to enter into grant agreement with New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources for Educational Training to send the Director of Planning and Community Development to the National Alliance <coughs> of Preservation Commission's Forum Conferences. City Clerk. Resolution number 5524, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources for Educational Training to send the Director of Planning and Community Development to the National Alliance of Preservation Commission's Forum Conference. Thank you. Councilor Witham. I'd like to suspend rules to have a second reading on this tonight, and I hope that Councilor Parity County <laughs> Zero does second this. <laughs> Councilor <laughs> with them makes a motion to suspend council rules for a second reading on resolution 55-24 seconded by Councilor Parity Catton Zero. Uh, question for the council is on the suspension of council rules for a second reading. Um, discussion. All right, seeing none, if you're in favor of the motion, you'll say by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll say by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? All right, eyes appear to have it, eyes have it. The motion passes. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 55-24. Resolution number 5524, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources for educational training to send the Director of Planning and Community Development to the National Alliance of Preservation Commission's Forum Conference. Thank you. Resolution 55-24, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment uh, being offered, Chair will look for a motion on Resolution 55-24. Councilor Witham. Move for the adoption of the longest resolution <laughs> title ever. <laughs> Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of what I assume is only Resolution 55-24, <laughs> seconded by Councilor Gibson. Um, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 55-24. Discussion? All right, I will say, it's very clear what this resolution is about. <laughs> I didn't even have to do my Could you clarify, approved. please? <laughs> um, all right, so again, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 55-24. Uh, if you are in favor of this adoption, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parity Cotton Zero. Yes. Misho. Yes. Great resolution 55-24 has been adopted. Uh, next on the agenda, we have comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter in, into a debate with any person, the mayor, city council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Seeing none, we will move on to agenda item 18, which is closing comments by council members. I can't remember, I keep forgetting to write where I left off last time, but we're gonna start to my left tonight. Excellent. <laughs> Councilor Vincent. I have nothing, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Uh, Councilor Gibson. Yeah. Um, I wanna join other members of the council and the community in mourning the passing of a true summer right, summer, blech. A true person of Summersworth, Sherry Dinger. Uh, knew her for years, great person. She will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Parity Captain Zero. No comment. Thank you. Councilor Mishu. Uh, I had a few comments to say, but I just noticed the time. The Celtics are on, so <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Witham. No comment. All right, thank you. Councilor Goodwin. No comment. 
Thank you. Councilor Cameron? I'll just say very quickly that the festival had a great turnout this past Saturday. Unfortunately, they did have to cancel Friday night, but they are looking at the 28th to reschedule. So hope to see everybody there. And I got very nice emails from some of the festival board members as my Don't Trash Summersworth was helping them Saturday for the hour. We were up at the Noble Pines. It was very tricky up there, but there were four of us and we got six bags of trash up there. My next one is July 20th. It's gonna be Will and Pond and I will be looking for a lot of volunteers for that one. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Austin. Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Thank you so much. All right, next on the agenda is future agenda items. Are there any agenda items requested for future meetings? Seeing none, okay. We'll move on to 20, which is non-public sessions. We have none. Last on the agenda is item 21, which is adjournment. Councilor Vincent moves that the council stand in adjournment until the next reg regularly scheduled meeting. Seconded by Councilor Gibson. Question for the council is adjournment. If you're in favor, please state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying aye. aye. In favor? Aye, all opposed? Aye. <laughs> All right, <laughs> sounds like the eyes have it. We are adjourned, thank you.